Resource acquisition is initialization. First, let's go over what a resource is. It's basically something important your computer needs to use, such as memory, files on a hard drive, or a network connection. And you have to acquire them in order to use them. Imagine it like picking out the toys that you need to play a game. But there's an issue when you're done playing with your toys. Sometimes people forget to put them back. And that can cause problems, like causing a mess or even the risk of tripping over them. For computers, it can cause a problem called a resource leak. In programming, if you forget to release a resource, like closing a file or freeing up memory, the computer can slow down or even crash. This is where C++ resource acquisition is initialization comes to the rescue. C++ has a special object that grabs whatever resource you want to use during the initialization part. And when you're done with the resource, or it goes out of scope, the resource gets released. It's like having a robot that automatically cleans up your toys when you're done playing with them. Deterministic Destructors Tying into what I talked about before, a destructor is for the process of releasing a resource or like putting your toys away. The deterministic part just means predictable or happens when expected. You see, in C++, when you use an object on a specific area or play with your toys in a designated room, as soon as you go out of scope or leave the toy room, an automatic robot immediately cleans up any mess, making sure your code is safe and mitigating errors. Const correctness. The const keyword, short for constant, this is used to specify where information is stored in a variable or a pointer, a pointer being an address that refers to a physical location in your computer's RAM, can be altered or not. It's like putting something in a locked glass box and you can only look at it but you can't edit or change it. This is often used when you don't don't want the information stored to be accidentally changed, therefore breaking your program. The Rule of 350 These are guidelines about resource management in C++. The Rule of 3 states if you manually manage resources, you must copy the constructor, copy assignment, and implement the destructor. In simpler terms, if you have a wagon full of toys, you must first make a copy of the wagon, making sure it gets its own set of toys, rather than pointing to the old ones, clean up toys from the old wagon before putting them in the new one, then cleaning up toys after you're done, or free up memory. The rule of five is the same as the rule of three, but with two extra steps. They involve moving resources instead of copying them, moving the constructor and moving assignments, or moving the toys from the old wagon into the new one, and swapping ownership of the toys after cleaning the old wagon. The rule of zeros basically says, if you don't manually manage resources, then you don't have to write any of the five special actions since C++ will do it for you. Value semantics by default. When you create an object in C++, value semantics is the concept that if you create a copy of that object, it is new, separate, and identical. Meaning, if you change something on either one, the other is unaffected by the change. They are completely independent. By default means that it's built into C++. It creates a safe and predictable ways to handle things in C++, so you don't have to worry about accidentally breaking your code just because you made a small change. Templates, a way to write one single blueprint code that works with different data types, such as integers or strings, aka whole numbers and words respectively. Templates allow you to do this without having to copy code for each data type. It's a type of compile time polymorphism. Polymorphism meaning many forms. This is about how it can handle many data types. And compile time meaning the building and customization happening before your program even runs, moves semantics, and R value references. Introduced in C11, these are features that allow you to transfer larger resources from temporary objects. Transferring resources can sometimes be slow, sometimes involving copying all nested objects and arrays in a process called deep copying, like transferring a 10,000 piece jigsaw puzzle by hand from an old box into a new one. Move semantics lets you skip all of that copying and just transfer transfer the ownership immediately. R value or right hand value references are special signals that make move semantics possible. It's like putting a one time use only sticker on the jigsaw puzzle box. 
both together provide a shortcut for transferring resources, preprocessor and inclusion model. The preprocessor is the first program that reads your code. It doesn't understand programming like the main compiler does. Its job is to follow simple instructions that start with a pound symbol. For example, pound include is responsible for importing other code or header files into your project. Pound define does a simple find and replace and pound if def hides code. The inclusion model is a rule set that governs how these imports work. For example, include guards that wrap an included file have a rule stating, if you have already included the file once, do not include it again. Undefined behavior. An umbrella term in C++ for types of actions such as dividing by zero or reading an uninitialized variable that can result in an undefined behavior, meaning the compiler can do anything. It might crash, it might work by chance, or it might even remove entire sections of your code during optimization. This is a trade-off C++ has for maximum performance. The friend keyword allows specific functions or classes to be able to access private or protected members of another class. In C++, when you create an object or class, you can either make it public, meaning code outside the class has access to the code inside it, or private, meaning code is only accessible within a class or object. You Using the friend keyword is like a secret key you can give to specific pieces of code so they can access private code. Multiple inheritance. The ability for a class or object to inherit from more than one base class. In C++, inheritance is usually simple. Imagine having the dog blueprint. You create a new blueprint called Poodle, then Poodle gets all of the traits of the basic dog blueprint. This is an example of simple inheritance. Multiple inheritance grabs traits from more than one parent blueprint. For example, the robot car inherits from both robot and car. However, you can run into an issue, and a famous one is called the diamond problem. Imagine a class that inherits something from two objects, and the parent objects both inherit something from a grandparent object. This would mean the grandchild inherits two copies of the same traits from its parents. Now, when the grandchild wants to run that piece of code, which one does it use? C++ handles this problem using virtual inheritance. Constant expression and constant evaluation. These are two special keywords that basically say, I want you to do something before the program even runs. You would use this or the constant expression keyword when you want the program to do something at compile time and not runtime. Normally, if you wrote a program that adds 5 plus 5, nothing would happen unless the user is running the program. And even though the math is simple, it may take a bit of time and energy. Constant expression makes it so when the program runs, no calculation is needed at all because it was done before the program was ever built, making it run much smoother. The const eval keyword is just like const expression, but a lot stricter. You're basically telling the program that this specific calculation is so important that it must be done right now before the program is even built. And if you can't, you must stop and give an error. If you use const eval on a function that tries to use a number that won't be known until the program runs, the compiler will stop and yell at you. Both keywords are designed to help C++ programs run faster by getting the most simplest work done ahead of time. User defined a literal. In C++, a literal is just a simple fixed value that you type directly into your code. In other words, it's just simply typing things like the number 10 or 1.5 or words like hello and world. Now, the computer may know what these mean, but hard coding values like this may cause a problem with readability. For example, if you're trying to code a function called Pikachu and you put these numbers into it as inputs, it's not really clear what what these mean. Colloquially, these are called magic numbers because these are values with not really much meaning or context. User-defined literals do something really neat. It lets you add a label. User-defined literals lets you teach the computer a special suffix that you attach directly to a number or word, and it tells the computer and other people exactly what you're talking about. These labels always start with an underscore. This prevents any accidental mix-ups, and it makes your code clearer and safer. The most vexing parse. This is like talking about a sentence that can be read in two completely different ways, but for some reason, the computer always chooses the most confusing one. Imagine you write a simple line of code for your computer to read. Now, what do you mean? There are two common ways to read this in C++. Did you mean to create a variable and put something inside of it, which is a normal way to create an object? Or did you mean to create a function that takes a certain input, which is a normal way to declare a function? Both interpretations are perfectly valid ways to read the exact same 
same line of code. It can get vexing because there can be situations where you intend to create a variable but you've accidentally created a function. This is basically because of how C++ works. Basically, if anything can be read as a function, even if you don't intend so, it's interpreted as a function. The standard template library. The standard template library, or the STL, is a huge collection of incredibly useful, already written tools that come with the C++ language. It's standard because every C++ programmer gets the exact same set of tools. The STL has three main types of tools. Containers, such as vectors, which are like super flexible boxes. Lists, which are like a chain of boxes. And maps, which is like a filing cabinet. Containers are special ways to hold and organize data. Then you have algorithms, such as sorting algorithms, finding or search algorithms, and duplicating or copy algorithms. And finally, iterators. The STL basically lets C++ programmers focus on writing the most useful programs instead of wasting time building basic tools, standard unique pointer and standard shared pointer. These are both special helpers called smart pointers that use the resource acquisition is initialization rule to keep your memory tidy. The standard unique pointer puts information in a special pointer or location in memory that nothing else is allowed to use. The standard shared pointer puts information in a special location in memory that has shared ownership as long as the users have a special key. Knowing the ins and outs of C++ is crucial for being a good programmer. And to become a good programmer, you can use Brilliant. Brilliant is an online learning platform with interactive courses in programming, math, science, and even machine learning. What I personally like about Brilliant is that the lessons are fully interactive. It tests you and you're able to apply your knowledge while you're learning. A method proven to be six times faster than watching lecture videos. It teaches advanced topics such as multivariate calculus in a way that's so quick and easy to understand. You not only learn programming, but you also learn logic, AI, data analysis, and mathematical thinking. It generally helps you become a better thinker and problem solver. And the lessons are crafted by an award-winning team of teachers, researchers, and professors from Stanford, Caltech, MIT, Microsoft, and Google. You can try Brilliant for free, but if you sign up through my link, brilliant.org slash flashbytes, you can get 20% off an annual subscription. It's personally helped me learn a lot, and I'm sure it'll help you too. Thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring this video.